We all know that sport is good for our kids. It gets them out of the house, of course, off those devices. And competition helps build resilience, whether they're winning or losing. But for many parents, seeing their children fail can make them feel that they've failed also yeah, as a parent. I, know, I feel that from the sidelines too. I empathise. It's not the case, though. Maybe it's OK for our kids to fail. Well, here to shed some light on this subject is child psychologist Dr Fiona Martin. Nice to have you with us, Hi, Fiona. Thank Welcome. you for inviting me on. Why is it good for our kids to fail? It's very good for our children to fail, in fact. And one of the most important reasons is because resilience, which is what protects them from developing mental health conditions, oh is unfortunately continuing to be a problem for our young people. So we know that anxiety and depression are very common health conditions, despite all our efforts to increase their, the awareness of mental health conditions and despite all our efforts to try and work on young people, it still continues to be a problem. So by building up resilience in children, and what I mean by resilience is allowing them to experience those little stresses across their life, little amounts of stress yeah. as opposed to large you know, amounts of stress, yeah. um, it builds them up and gives them strength to be able to cope when something does happen. Because, you know, resilience is the ability to bounce back yeah. from a negative event. And that's really the best thing you can give your child is the gift of resilience. So how yes. can we teach them that? Yeah. Well, resilience is taught in different ways. Parenting, parents have a large role to play in building up resilience. We want to be authoritative parents, mm. not authoritarian parents, authoritative parents. Okay. And what's parents. the difference there? The difference, well, authoritarian parents, they command um, a lot from their children in terms of behavioural expectations, but they don't provide a lot of emotional connection. Uh -huh. And it's emotional connection that you want to build up. It is essential. And it starts from the minute your baby is born. You know, when you wrap that baby up, that baby's placed on your chest and those beautiful hormones, you know, release oxytocin and it's that beautiful... Mm. Like, really, like that yes. overwhelming, like, ooh, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm going to eat you. Yes, that's right. And that bond starts. And that's when that bond is started and it continues throughout, you know, the, your child's life. Instead of, obviously, providing them physical comfort, though, over time you're providing them emotional support. Mm. And you need to be able to hold your child emotionally. Mm. So when they do get distressed, that you're there and you can, you can deal with their emotional right. distress. So Great info. I mean... Teach emotional skills, I think, is what yeah, you're saying to us. Yeah, social emotional competence is the, absolutely the key. It's essential. And it's more important than academic success. Wow. Mm. Mm. There's some great uh, coaching tools here. You've even included, I think, is it the, the little engine that could? I My think I can. I think I can. Book. Yeah. Some great so good. Yeah. Connecting with your emotions. Yeah. And promote something of an optimistic mindset as well with absolutely. your kids too. Yes, yes. And Martin Seligman's work, you know, famous US psychologist who's all about, you know, the glass is half full rather than half empty. Yeah. So teaching optimism from a very young age. Great, is very important. Great information. Dr. Fiona, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.